oh, my wife does my accounts or my mum does my accounts. And, you know, and then I spoke to a guy yesterday and he was like, yeah, my mum does my accounts, but she's not very good at them, but I don't know how to tell her. And there's there's the danger that, you know, almost if you employ somebody or you employ a friend or, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean they're the right person for your business just because it's easy and, you know, they're free. So welcome back, everybody. Um, so this is the second part in um, the vodcast series that we're recording with Ian Morgan from MBS. So welcome back again, Ian. Um, MBS accountants are um, an accountant that doesn't accountancy that doesn't just do your accounts. They can help you grow your business, scale your business, and plan an exit strategy. So essentially, we'll hold your hand throughout the whole process. Um, the last vodcast we recorded was very much based around VAT um, and how it can actually break a business. And that's why this vodcast followed on quite nicely, which is about having a strong relationship with your accountant. And if you do have strong relationships with your accountant, you can grow, scale or exit your business and not fall into the traps of not having enough cash flow to cover your VAT. So um, I will hand over to you, Ian, um, and you can explain a little bit more why it is so important for business owners to have that strong relationship with people like yourselves. Yeah, so thanks, Sam. I think, I think first of all, we've been guilty as accountants ourselves of not um, always having that underlying principle of high relationships. Mm -hmm. We've very much been the, the tax return factory, if you like, where what we did was literally clients in do the tax return off you go see you next year yeah the the challenge with that is you leave business owners to their own devices and the being a business owner myself i'm certainly guilty of this every business owner thinks the impossible is possible mm -hmm. and the advantage that we believe an accountant brings is that when you're making these decisions in your business about where you're going most attend uh, accountants tend to have, I was going to say a pessimistic, but that might be a little bit harsh. They tend to have a more cautious and risk averse approach. Mm -hmm. What they then are is a great sounding board that when you can go, right, I think that I can achieve X, Y, and Z, and I'm going to take over the world. They can be very good at bringing in to go, yeah, but why do you think you can do that? Mm -hmm. Explain it to me. Give, me. give me the fundamentals. Give me the tactics you're going to use. Why is it that the right strategy? And then that helps in terms of that actually there's a plan that's built that's somewhere between the accountant's view that almost nothing is possible and mm -hmm. the business view that everything is possible. Mm. You find this happy medium in, in the middle where you go, do you know what? That's a bit of a stretch, but what we're not trying to do, we're not trying to take over the world tomorrow. We can take over the world in a hundred years time, yeah. but it's going to be step by step. Let's make a degree of progress. And then the typical strengths of, of a business owner is like i say it's already this you know the very optimistic view you can see all the potentials the sales opportunities the marketing opportunities and so on mm -hmm. but the accountant what they're able to do is bring in the right things that can measure that progress is being made so that closer relationship we can start to go right let's just start with a very basic view and just start to go this is the plans you said you wanted to achieve by x date how are you performing versus that plan yeah Sometimes they're financial measures. So it might be you wanted to hit this sales and this amount of profit. Sometimes it might also be coupled in to go, hang on, you want to hit this sales and this amount of profit, but you only want to be working this number of hours. Mm -hmm. So let's make sure we've also got a way of measuring the number of hours that you're actually working. And so there becomes a bit of accountability back across that in terms of measuring um, how things are going. Yeah. That then clear focus, you can start to then build and go, hang on, let's build in some extra some extra detail that's specific to your business and what you're trying to achieve. So you can get some real custom um, performance KPIs that can be monitored, mm -hmm. but it's the fact of starting, starting basic and working from there. The advantage that that accountant brings is you're not the only business owner that they speak to. Yes. They are speaking to numerous business owners who they have seen try different things and succeed, try other things and fail. Maybe there's some patterns that they recognize of typical things that people go through. Um, one obvious one that we often see is that um, we said about sort of the ego and being infallible as a business owner, you have to think you can achieve the impossible. Mm -hmm. And I think you have to have that in order to get started. Mm -hmm. But there becomes a point 
somewhere after hiring, certainly after hiring your first person, uh, first employee. But there becomes this point where you have to go, do you know what? There's other people out there who are better at other things than I am. Yes, I can't absolutely. just be a, amazing at everything. And I need yeah. to hire people in these positions that are better than me because actually then we get better and we improve. Yes. And that moment of where they have to start letting go of the ego and, you know, and go, do you know what? I'm just good at being, I need to be like good at lots of things, but I need to just be amazing almost at, at nothing in particular and mm-hmm. hire people to do those roles. The moment that realization factor comes in, business starts to really, really rack up and starts to do so much better. Yeah. And we're aware to go that people need to go through that learning stream. And we see it time and time and time again um, with business owners all the time. And you go, do you know what? That goal wasn't achieved because you got in your own way. Yeah. Um, or, sorry to interrupt. And what, yeah, a lot yeah. of clients that I speak to, I find that they've, so I speak to a lot of people in the construction trade and they'll say, oh, my wife does my accounts or my mum does my accounts. And, you know, and then I spoke to a guy yesterday and he was like, yeah, my mum does my accounts, but she's not very good at them, but I don't know how to tell her. And there's there's the danger that, you know, almost if you employ somebody or you employ a friend or, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean they're the right person for your business just because it's easy and, you know, they're free. Um, if you look at any of any of the big corporate businesses, you've got your CEO who sits at the top and then they have all their experts underneath. They have their accountancy, marketing, HR, legal, because that's not their forte. Their forte is the service or the product. Um, and that has to then be mirrored for small business owners and they need to engage with somebody like yourself. So they need to carry on, I don't know, building houses or whatever it is they're good at and hand their accounts over to you and not to their wife or partner who can use a little bit of zero, but actually can't give them that solid advice that an accountant would give you. Yeah, we always come back to just to go, look, we get it. In terms of a startup, you've got to be, cautious and careful where that money is and as the business owner you do have to be um, very adaptable and try and put effort into other areas that maybe don't come as naturally Mm -hmm. Um, and sometimes you need to hire the cheap help if you like in the early stages to get that over the line but the core principle we come back to is is actually the main objective of a business even beyond serving customers and making sure everybody's happy and the team are happy and all that the main purpose is for the business to make money Mm-hmm. the business doesn't make money it's not going to be here for very long and so no. therefore ultimately the customers and customers and the staff and everybody else doesn't really matter because yeah. the business doesn't exist anymore yeah so I, obviously we would say this in terms of <laughs> don't scrimp on the accounting function yeah but like genuinely if i if i wasn't an accountant um in fact actually even better example right everything that we do and we offer within our, our accounting practice we use ourselves on our own business. So okay. I will produce a set of management accounts and do a report to the other directors and the leadership team on how we performed. Yeah. Right? Now you think they, they all understand it. They could do the access that information. They could do whatever they need to do. But if we aren't going through that and believe it's the right thing to do, why are we offering it as a service? Mm-hmm. And the job of the, the rest of that leadership team is to challenge and go, okay, but we said we were going to achieve X. Why did we only achieve Y? Mm-hmm. and it's not that it's not the results that necessarily the important part it's good to measure them it's mm-hmm. the challenge that you can then get off the back of it yeah because the it's the age-old saying isn't it is of what get what gets measured gets improved yeah absolutely and if you've got um i was gonna say poor quality but it might not necessarily if if your accounting data is not up to date and it's not accurate there's no point in going and chasing off and going oh i'd love a cash flow forecast or i'd love management reports they're not accurate anyway mm. because the data that they're based upon isn't accurate. So you're not, you're not achieving anything. The fundamental yeah. point has to be, do you have financial control, which is up to date, good quality financial information? Because yeah. if, if something goes wrong today in your business, you want to be able to go look at it and go, do you know what? Everything good was, everything was good financially yesterday. Mm-hmm. So what could have gone wrong in one day? We're only dealing yeah. with this one issue. Yeah. Whereas actually, if it's the case to go, do you know what my, I don't know, like saying my mum has a go and she does it once a month and gets everything all brought up to date. 
Well, if something goes wrong today and you know she hasn't sorted last month yet, you're going, oh, hang on, that's a that's a whole month. A lot could have happened in a month in business. Yeah, yeah. So um, keeping that control is important. So, and I know you don't you don't really work with startups very often unless they're like very successful very quickly. But what at what point should a business owner think that maybe they need to start engaging with an accountant? Because, like you said, when you're when you're a startup, it's all about you know you've got no you've got no funds, you've got no cash flow, so everything's very you know every penny is very precious, and that's probably why you do ask your mum or you start using an accountancy software yourself. Uh, is there a point in a business where you should then think, do you know what, I do need to speak to an accountant? Is it a turnover related? Is it, what, how, how do you decide that as a business owner? Or is it how how long is a piece of string question? <laughs> it's, it's a little bit of how long is a piece of string, but in terms of my opinion, yeah, um, going back to that fundamental principle that a business is there to make money, yeah, my bit would be as soon as you can afford to is when you should do. Okay. Because... Okay. Yeah, if if you don't know if you're making money or not, uh, actually, somebody said to me this a long time ago, right? Um, sport gets this extremely right because there's a scoreboard. Okay. But how many people would watch sport if there wasn't a scoreboard? If you didn't know who was winning or losing, you'd take all the passion and everything away from it. Of course you would, yeah. So if you ask most people, would you rather be on a winning team or a losing team? Everybody wants to be on the winning team. Mm-hmm. And then if you go, okay, but would, if you wouldn't have the option of the winning team, would you rather be on the losing team or the team that has absolutely no idea if they're winning or losing. Mm-hmm. Now suddenly everybody chooses a losing team because you'd rather know what you're doing wrong so you can fix it. Exactly. If it's the case you're scrimping and you've got no idea whether the, the information you've got is accurate, up to date, what's going on, how do you know, I don't know, all this extra work that you're winning from a certain area, how do you know that that work's even making you money? Yeah, yeah, true. Um, and that's the thing, I think it's, as human beings, we're naturally quite lazy. We'll go to the easy option where possible. Yeah. But the easy option isn't always the right option. So how are we being disciplined to go, okay, I see that and I'm going down that route, but is that really the right option? You need somewhere to test it. Okay. And the other thing I think I've noticed is most people don't understand numbers. Mm-hmm. If you if you, prese- if you present, a, I don't know, a, profit and loss statement with the last six months worth a month by month most people will look at it and just glaze over and just go it's too many numbers doesn't make sense mm. you need somebody who can interpret that on your behalf and tell you the story of what they're seeing mm-hmm. and then your job is to sort of go hang on yeah but you're telling me that story but this is the story that i think is happening mm-hmm. can we can those stories interact or actually are they completely wrong and one doesn't line up with the other because mm-hmm. If the story of what you know is happening in the business versus what the numbers are telling you uh, are two different stories, something's going wrong somewhere. Yeah. Either the data is inaccurate or you're making some decisions somewhere that are undoing the work that you think you're doing. As always, Ian, very good advice and guidance. Um, so if you would, um, if you want to speak to Ian again, maybe um, you know, you've got an accountant at the moment and the relationship isn't great and you feel like you do need to engage with a new accountant. As you can see, <laughs> Ian is very focused on building relationships with his clients because he puts into practice everything that he's just said. So you can find Ian on our platform, which is the directorschoice.com under the accountancy sector. Um, Ian is also on LinkedIn. So it's Ian Morgan. And um, also you can go to MBS's website. So thank you so much, Ian. Um, I look forward to um, recording the next podcast with you. And Ian is also, it is June, July, it's July. And um, MBS are our experts of the month as well. So um if you do, as I say, if you do want to engage with them, you'll find lots of content about MBS on LinkedIn from ourselves. So thank you so much, Ian, and have a great day. Thank you. Cheers, Sam. Thanks.